Casual here. In this video I'm going to show three of the best current Pyromancer builds and which patch tree skills you should pick up to make them even better in World Slayer. With each of these I'll take you through what makes the builds work, a build summary and look at the pack skill trees. Also stay with me at the end of the video for a peek at a bonus build that I think will be completely broken in World Slayer. Let's start with a bang and the current world record speedrun build. This Pyromancer build was created by Sir Joseph and used by Pomerons and Full Metal V to get world record expedition clear times. This build doesn't use a gear set and can be built with mainly epic armour, making it very accessible. It focuses on anomaly damage, but uses the top class tree. The top tree gives you access to two trial of the ashes, which buffs your damage by 25% against enemies affected by ash. Ashes to ashes, which applies vulnerable for a further 15% damage. While death sentence and ashen boost buffs the damage further, all of which are activated by ash blast, which procs hot situation. The big difference with this build from other ash blast overheat builds is that it uses volcanic rounds. There are two reasons for this. First it applies burn which buffs damage by 20% through bullet kindling and also activates the increased damage of master consumer. Secondly and what is really great build design is that when volcanic rounds ends reload boost provides you with a 50% anomaly damage buff which includes anomaly damage that your weapons do. What is great about this is that I can activate volcanic rounds and cancel it immediately by reloading or changing weapons and that is the critical thing with this build damage exactly when I need it. Weapons mirror this core design feature. Funeral power is the main weapon. Hit fire it so that it can hit multiple enemies at once, applying burn widely. It is modded with Shadow Comet and Claymore Torrent, which prop multiple times when multiple enemies are hit with one shot. Big damage on demand. The second weapon is the Roaring Umbra, modded with Kinetic Stomp and Moaning Winds. Fire one bullet to prop Kinetic Stomp, then, if I need it, reload for Moaning Winds. Damage when I want it. My gear is rounded off for power assimilation, a great buff particularly in New Horizon expeditions, ash increased range to make sure ash blast hits every enemy on the minimap, Captain Hunter, Phoenix Force and detonator for cooldown reduction. Cooldown reduction is one of the key stats on your gear along with anomaly power and status power, the latter which is important in keeping burn and ash up for as long as possible so that I can chain combos together. Picking up a marble orchard and wild fire also help to reduce cooldowns on my skills for this. With a 6.6 .6 second cooldown on overheat, hit overheat to proc phoenix force and the anomaly power buff it gives. Apply burn with one shot before activating reload boost, then ash blast and overheat again all while the anomaly buffs are still active to deliver big AoE damage. While this build is awesome at dealing control damage, it does suffer from one problem. If I screw up, I'm going to die. It is very unforgiving in this respect, which shouldn't come as a surprise given it is a speedrun build. To make it a little friendlier to use, I would bring in a damage absorber for either bullet kindling or power assimilation, and if that is still not enough, run one piece with max health on it. For this build, I think that the best pack skills to pick up will be Melting Point to increase your resistance piercing from 15% to at least 30%, Master Exploder which will buff the damage of your overheat by 30%, Conduction so that you can use your skills more often. Backdraft which should ideally buff your anomaly power by 60% when you are using overheat and trigger sequence which will buff the damage of your overheat by up to 90%. You could also look at convection and arsonist to allow you to spam your skills constantly but given that overheat wipes the map currently this would need enemies to be spawning constantly or them to be significantly tougher than anything we have seen before in order to be better than buffing the damage through backdraft and trigger sequence. Let's jump now from what has been the strongest build in New Horizon to a build that is rarely used. The Pyromancer Firepower build. Now you could say that this is a mean build and I know that some of you will but the joke would be on you because this Pyromancer Firepower build is a lot of fun to play. This build uses the Seismic Commander gear set. That is the stupidest idea I've ever heard! Hang on, hang on, don't leave just yet, trust me. This build works. The Seismic Commander set bonus buffs damage to enemies afflicted by bleed by 50%. Tainted Blood takes this buff up to a whopping 75% damage buff and bleed is applied to every enemy you shoot through ultimate bleeding bullets. Bleed also solves the main issue that Volcanic Rounds users have. 
ammo replenishment, as Vampiric Mag is the best armor mod for this in the game. My favorite gun to run with this build is Amber Vault, which comes with Killing Spree, not quite as strong a damage mod as Dark Sacrifice, but without the downside of the health drain. Amber Vault comes with close range damage on it, so you should always try to be in close range with enemies all the time. Overall this build gains 55% close range damage, 25% of which comes through personal space, so this is really important to make the build work. I run personal space because its buff applies to all enemies, rather than Captain Hunter which applies just to elites, and works even when Volcanic Rounds is down, unlike Lava Rounds. Your damage at close range is buffed further by staring to the barrel, and your overall damage by Sharp Eye and Bloodlust. All of this so far is pretty standard for any Fire Power build, but even with just this the build puts out great damage. Well, what takes it to top tier levels is the mod Death Sentence, which adds 40% weapon damage, and the Class Tree Nodes Burning Situation, Trial of the Ashes, and Ashes to Ashes, adding 45%, 25%, and a further 15% damage output. Pop Ash Blast to apply Ash and activate Burning Situation, and you have layers upon layers of weapon damage buffs, making it easy to burn down enemies quickly. I am picking up more weapon damage buffs through the Class Tree, including Hurt Twice as Long and Assault master. With this build you should focus on gear with bonus firepower, close range damage and healing received or cooldown reduction. Status power is not awful as it buffs status effects, but I wouldn't focus on it as you aren't running enough anomaly power to make this an effective source of damage. The Seismic Commander set is anomaly focused, so use the feet, gloves and legs which comes with tainted blood to avoid losing more bonus firepower than you need to. One of the challenges people find with pyromancers is that they are pretty squishy, so I've addressed this in three ways. Firstly through the mod damage absorber, but you could use mitigation from death, perseverance shield or even protection of the flames. Secondly I picked up moths to the flame and leeching force through my class tree, which with healing received on amber vault provides some nice healing over time. Thirdly, my final skill is Feed the Flames, which heals me for 16,000 health, as well as applying Ash and pulling enemies into close range. Great synergy with the overall build. Because you are running the Feet and Gloves of the Seismic Commander set, you do have nearly 27,000 health, which gives you a nice buff against being too shot. Now there are a few things you could change to match this build to your playstyle. You could run Fatal Symbion, which puts out a little more damage through Dark Sacrifice, but it's tougher to stay alive with due to the health drain. You could also also run Inferno C which provides nice AoE and more crit damage. If you use this you will want to stack long range damage over close range damage. Run Lava Rounds instead of Personal Space and Captain Hunter instead of Stare into the Barrel. The reason why people use round spills is that armor is bypassed with the skill. Now both Amber Vault and Fatal Symbion come with armor piercing, and if you are struggling to keep volcanic rounds up, this comes in very handy. You could pick up more armor piercing through the class tree as well if this is an issue. For my secondary weapon I'm running the guillotine with moaning winds and radiation splash, which is there for when volcanic rounds drops. Anomaly damage gets a 30% buff from death sentence, making this a very nice AoE clear when the shit hits the fan. To be honest though, I haven't had a problem keeping Volcanic Rounds up with this build. Remember that Killing Spree takes 3 kills to get to its maximum buff, so focus smaller enemies before you tackle elites. Pop Ash Blast to get your massive damage multipliers going and to make wiping packs easier. Use Feed the Flames for quick heals and to keep the burning situation buff up. And most of all, keep in close range. The top tree of the pack skill tree synergizes incredibly well with this build. Coming in hot is just a great damage buff with no damage. Downside. You then have a choice. Because this build uses Ash Blast and Volcanic Rounds, every enemy will be marked, so you could pick up Ashen Regalia if you are struggling to stay alive, but I think that Ashen Wake is the one to go for, as it provides a massive AoE damage buff. Hot Streak provides a nice buff to weapon damage for the accurate player. Carbon Ammo addresses all of the ammo issues that the Firepower Pyromancer in one skill making these builds viable and also leaning into Bullet Frenzy. With the 60 round mag of Amber Vault being increased to 120 by Carbon Ammo, you can get up to a 240% weapon damage boost. Aim at elites and just hold the trigger down until they drop. Now there is one other option you could go for. While Carbonization is largely useless to the build, it does give us access to Carbon Footprint. This skill will reduce the cooldown on both Feed the Flames and Ash Blast to almost nothing, making modding Bullet Absorption and Flame Grasper a real 
option. This would remove the need to use the seismic commander gear set, allowing you to equip all firepower gear, bring in Captain Hunter and Bullet Kindling for the two Devastator mods you are currently using, and swap out Ultimate Bleeding Bullets for Dark Sacrifice on your weapon for an overall damage output increase. With all the ash you're able to apply through these skills, you will have the potential to stun lock many enemies, albeit be careful of Elite's resistance. The third build that I think will be getting a huge buff in World Slayer is the Pyromancer Phaser Beam build. This build uses the Akari gear set bonus, Heatwave, a Magma Elemental coupled with no resistance against the Fortify and Unstoppable Force to buff your anomaly power to ridiculous levels. In the example I am showing now, getting up to over 600,000 anomaly power is pretty easy, but full disclosure, the build I am running here is actually missing one mod which would buff anomaly power much higher than this. The Akari gear set bonus, of which I am running the helmet, armor, and waist cloth, and magma elemental are all triggered by heat wave. So I am buffing this through my mods with fire tsunami, which helps to hit as many enemies as possible, and tidal wave, increasing the number of times I can use it. Given that the anomaly power buffs I am getting do stack, I would ideally also be using ride the wave, but unfortunately I have yet to get the right epic boots to drop with this mod on them. I am also using burnt out, which buffs the damage that all enemies take by 25% each time Heat Wave hits them, so Ride the Wave would also buff my damage output significantly. I am using Volcanic Rounds coupled with the mod Reload Boost to buff all of the anomaly damage I do, including from Heat Wave, Phaser Beam and my weapon mods. Bullet Kindling and Captain Hunter provide further enemy debuffs, all of which together help me hit with my Phaser Beam for 6-7 to seven million of damage. With the extra buffs I would get from an additional Heat Wave, this would increase to around 10 million or so, which will one shot every elite. The mod I have in this build instead of Ride the Wave is Volcanic Armor. Now this is not an awful mod, and it does make you largely immune to damage when in the phaser beam animation, which is not a short one for sure. But given that this is a middle tree build, you already have plenty of health and armor to keep you alive, including Anomalous Lava. Anomaly Power, which I am picking up on every armor piece, is buffed by two Archmage no and also Distant Flame, which I think is a great way to double dip on the Magma Golan nodes I am picking up. I am also using the mod Anomaly Echo, which comes on the Akari Waste Cloth. Being able to pop your Heat Wave and Phaser Beam as often as possible is essential to the build, so I have picked up two Warm Ups and Wildfire, all of which benefit every skill I am using, as well as on every piece of armor except for the Akari Helmet. Being able to pop Heat Wave every 5.6 seconds and Phaser Beam every 7.6 seconds really ups my DPS. The damage of Phaser Beam does scale off status power, and so your gear should carry this wherever you can, and that is why I am using Damascus Offering and Roaring Umbra as my weapons of choice. Damascus Offering is modded with Claymore Torrent and Fortress, the latter of which is a nice buff to armor resistance and damage. Just look out for the green glow around your hands when it is active. I have modded Roaring Umbra with Kinetic Stomp and Moaning Winds, a great little one-two punch of AoE damage. Just fire one shot and then hit reload. With debuffs I apply through Heat Wave, Moaning Winds will hit for more than 2 million of damage. A nice way to finish this build and elites off. This is all well and good, but with the new pack skill trees coming in with World Slayer, this build is getting a huge buff. Melting Point buffs resistance piercing by up to 30%, which will in turn buff anomaly power through unstoppable force. Scorch Flesh will increase your status power and thus phaser beams damage by up to 45%. Conductive will reduce cooldowns so you can use heat wave and phaser beam more often. Furnace adds another buff to status power, which given the amount of burn you put out with this build, will be maxed out a lot of the time, while Burnt Offerings turns burn damage into one of the best dots in the game. So these are the three builds that are good currently and will be getting buffed significantly in World Slayer, but at the start of the video I mentioned a bonus build that I think will be completely broken. Well that build is my no resistance build that already was able to wipe whole rooms in one go, and with the new packs trees the damage it does is going to triple or more. Check out this video to see this build in full. Until next time, catch you out.